Hey, it's Cade here again, and this time I'm bringing you something a little different, not tech so much, but uh, something that I think is pretty cool, and that is Famous Monsters of Filmland. Now, if you were a youngster back in the day, growing up, when this magazine was popular, you would have been in the... Um, the group of kids who probably loved this this old uh, magazine. Now it was aimed at kids for sure, um, and it really was just a picture picture magazine for the most part. But you know it was a lot of fun back in the day to, to flip through the pages of the, this magazine. This one that I have here is from 1972, May, and it's just one I happened to randomly come across and just watched Scream and Scream Again, which is a, a 1970s, um, I think it was actually 1970, um, it was a really <laughs> hokey sort of movie, um, but it had some big names in it, um, mostly squandered their talent, but you know, it was, uh, it was a thing. So anyway, I happened to run across this magazine on archive.org and I thought you know what I'm gonna just have a, do a little video about this um, if you want more info on what you can get from archive.org and downloading these kinds of magazines if you'd like to flip through them for nostalgia's sake I guess then go to archive.org it's just full of all kinds of great old magazines and comics and what have you so um, I recommend it but let's just flip through and get underway with just seeing what does a magazine like this have to offer for people. So let's just get right into it. So this one, like I said, it features the cover of this movie. It was, wasn't that great, but I think the cover art's awesome. Um, the Vampire Lovers, that is another classic, uh, classic uh, movie if you haven't seen it and you like pokey old um, vampire movies and stuff. This one is a winner. Um, so one of the things you'll notice about it is that the Forey Ackerman is the, I guess the editor of this magazine. That's who, who had all these pictures and memorabilia of monster movies and science fiction movies and stuff like that. And um, so he was using his vast collection a source for all the pictures and things you'd see. Um, moving along here, you can see the kinds of kids that were fans of this kind of magazine, kind of geeks, kids, um, and they'd write into the, the magazine. Pretty cute. All right, so here's your ta table of contents. Some of the things you'll be you can look at if you want to pause for a second, see what it has to offer, and let's dive right into it. The Cry of the Banshee. Didn't see this one, but I'm sure it's a winner. The art alone is worth it. And so this is what you'd see is like a lot of kind of like goofy sort of something aimed at um, kids, really. And a lot of it, too, has a lot of puns in it. So if you actually go through this magazine, you'll find that there's a ton of puns. So if you put up with that. <laughs> it's pretty cute. So just quickly flying through here, there's actually a lot of pages in this magazine. I think it's like 73 pages or something. So yeah, I won't, uh, won't talk too long about each one. We'll just kind of flip it through. Uh, of course, they do, con they do tributes to certain actors in the genre. So Tor Johnson was a recognizable face in a lot of uh, monster movie type things back in the 50s. Anyway, so he passed on and of course they were doing a tribute to him. Um, and other actors. Yeah. Some great classic actors. You, reckon, you might recognize their faces if you know monster movie stuff. Um, but yeah. And of course, in the 70s, there was strange characters like Tiny Tim, if you don't know who that was. I'll let you look it up. Um, yeah. 
So then, of course, it dives into this movie. And, of course, it had Vincent Price, a big name. It also had uh, Christopher Lee. And it even had Peter Cushing in it very briefly. Um, so it had a lot of talent, but, like I said, it was mainly squandered. Um, but, yeah, then they, of course, have some other... Actually, I haven't seen actually like these. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Then they'd have some like games. I like, guess you could say like, oh, can you guess who this is? Sort of stuff. The Vampire Lover. So now we're getting into this one. Now this this movie I've seen uh, parts of it. I don't can't say that I've seen the whole thing. Um, but I remember it being quite well done. Ingrid Pitt is in it, and she's quite. Uh, convincing as the vampires. Of course it has Peter Cushing. He's a mainstay of Hammer films and uh, you recognize his uh, face almost anywhere. Attack of the Giant Tarantula. Well there you go. So there you have it. Some hokey stuff there. For and after makeup effects. You like to see makeup effects back in how they used to do it with practical effects. This is your magazine. Goofy puns again. You axed for it. This here is uh, Ford Ackman right there. Gotta love his hair and hairdo. Um, yeah. Ah, here's a classic. So back in the 70s, there was a, a movie called Cole Chack the Night Stalker. Well, it was a series, but there's a couple of movies. And in this particular case, I guess it was going by the name of the Cole Shack Tapes, an ABC movie of the week. And at the time, I think it got some of the best um, viewership of any movie of its time period. It's a real classic, and if you haven't seen it, you gotta see it. Cole Shack, look it up. And of course, we have the two-headed transplant. Saw that. Remember, it was pretty bad. Uh, then, of course, we have um, Anne Francis uh, and Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. Again, great movie with Liam Neeson. Um, Um, yeah, it's definitely worth worth um, checking out if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's great, great show. Um, go respondents. Anyway, yeah, again, kids, kids magazine. But you know what? A lot of the kids that read this magazine went on to become, you know filmmakers like uh, I think it's been said that, um, that uh, Steven Spielberg was a fan and uh, uh, Steven Spielberg and the guy from um, Star Wars um, both were heavily influenced as well as other people um, I know um, uh, there's a number of different producers that um, mention um, famous monsters as a big influence on them. And of course here is Christopher Lee. And apparently yeah, he must have been visiting Bory because there they are in his house of horrors with his mannequins and such. So yeah, pretty, pretty fun interviews old magazines, and you could buy back issues, I guess. Uh, some Q&A. Um, Monster Masks, that's a classic. And if you didn't know, uh, Warren was the publisher of this magazine, and he had a couple of other magazines, and one of the recognizable ones is Creepy and Eerie are less picture books and more uh, 
comic book, I guess, akin to maybe um, Tales of the Crypt, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And of course, now here's one, Barnabas. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Dark Shadows, but it was a soap opera, essentially, that was popular back in the 70s, and it was about vampires. Can you imagine that? Like a daytime soap opera about vampires. <laughs> and it ran a long time, so. Dark Shadows. If you're interested, you can look it up. Ah, yes, and of course, what do you sell in a movie? in a magazine like this? Well, you sell 8mm films of parts of movies, I'm assuming. The Mysterious Doctor Satan. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and toys. Gimmicks. Car party tricks. Venus flytraps. More Super 8s. Yeah, there's some winners. Maybe we have to go through to go through to get to watch your monster movie, and then, all right, and then let's not just sell people eight millimeter films. Let's sell them LPs, long play records. Yeah, there you go. All right, some more fan mail, I guess, and more pleas for subscriptions. Oh, another magazine that they have is Vampirella. Um, yeah, and here you go, and others, apparently there was other movie monster magazines called Monster World, so yeah, it was a thing. Now here's classics, the EC Comics, now if you don't know what EC Comics was, it was a comic book company that before they sanitized comics, they had some pretty gruesome stuff for back in the day, and they were quite popular. And they were the start of Tales from the, the Crypt, but they also had the Vault of Horror and the horror comics in the 50s. Um, well, this, this is just basically talking about it. Um, a collection, I guess, of those, those old comics. I guess they tried to, you know, to tame, tame, calm, uh, tame them, I guess, not tame them, what would you say? They tried to censor them, essentially. The guy in charge of it said, no way, man, and that was it. That was the end of EC Comics. And then, of course, you had the comic, I don't know, Mafia. Controlled comics after that point. So, yeah, there you go. Saving your children. And this is the scanner, the person who scanned the magazine. So there you go. That's 13 minutes of uh, skimming through one of these old magazines. If you like this kind of stuff, there's lots of it on on. Uh, archive.org. I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed there's a lot of stuff is coming down, so if you like this stuff, you might want to take advantage of it while you can, because I suspect we're not going to have it for very long. I suspect it's going to be copyright issues, and you're going to see a lot of stuff coming down. But in the meantime, enjoy it while you can. So, that's me, signing off.